Hello everyone, my name is uh, Fokker Trisprong and I work as an uh, open source engineer at uh, Tabular. Today I want to talk about like all the new sweet goodness that we get from uh, Pi Iceberg 0.2.1. Uh, what I'm going to show today is all part of uh, a repository. It's called uh, Docker Spark Iceberg. It's public. Uh, so if you want to give it a try yourself, play around with it, uh, feel free to go to uh, the repository, clone it and uh, run the Docker Compose. It's very easy to set up. If you run into anything, uh, let me know. Um, so as soon as you have it running locally, you can go to localhost 8888 and you will see uh, the Jupyter Notebook environment, which has four notebooks around Iceberg and one around Pi Iceberg. That's what I'm going to talk about today. So if you open the notebook, we'll see like you know, the first cell just to verify the version. So now we're on the latest one. Uh, and what we're going to do first is load some data. So let me just uh, give it a swing. So what this does is we'll first create like a, a database, New York City with a table, New York City taxis, and using Iceberg, of course, and it's partitioned by the, uh, the column prep pickup timestamp, and then uh, partitioned by day. So we have nicely partitioned the table that we can uh, very nicely query on per day. Uh, what we're gonna load is five uh, months of data, four of them in 2022 and one in 2021. Um, yeah, this is some nice advantages that you can see in a moment. Uh, we're going to uh, use Pi's Iceberg now. So what we're going to do first is initialize the catalog. Um, so what we're going to do is load catalog, the default one, and then we pass in these parameters by hand. Uh, if you have it running on your local machine, you can also have like a have like a configuration file, which is a bit more convenient if you run it uh, outside of a notebook. So uh, let's run this. What we're going to do next is say catalog load table. New York City taxis is the one that we just uh, created. And what we're going to do right after it is create like a scan and where we say like row filter, greater than or equal and the pickup time 2021 January. So what this does, this is one of the nice secret sauce of Iceberg that it will only load like the data from 2021, uh, 22 in the, into the memory and it will completely ignore the data from 2021. So we're not wasting any memory here um, or loading in additional data that we're not going to use anyway. Uh, this is especially nice for environments like Python, where you run it on a single machine. So we're going to turn this table scan into an error table and then directly to a pandas table. So let's do that now. Um, so let's check how many rows it has. It's almost uh, 12 million. And this table is in memory 1.1 gigabytes. So it's not huge, but also not, uh, not small. I think most of you are familiar with this data set. It's the pickup times like number of passengers, trip distance, uh, pickup locations, uh, payment information like fair amounts, tips, total, congestion, and these kind of things. So it's a nice data to play around with. So let's look at uh, one of the histograms. If you say fair amount, yeah, we can see that's a lot of noise here in the, in the table. Um, yeah, this is what we can use. Uh, we can use um, just a statistical test to remove this noise. Uh, let's say that everything larger than three standard deviations because I hope that nobody is paying like 400k for a taxi trip. And then we can plot it again. And then you can see that there's like a very nice uh, uh, hockey stick curve. So I think this is like the typical way that you want to use Iceberg. So you filter down like the from the use data set, uh, all the stuff that you're not going to use anyway. And then you can use Python to further uh, uh, drill it down like and remove like outliers like I'm doing now. One thing I also want to highlight is DuckDB. Uh, PyArrow works very nicely with DuckDB, and I think it's also a very nice use case in combination with Iceberg, where you have like Iceberg that's like the petabyte size table. You filter it down and you only load like the data that you actually need. Load in DuckDB, you can do everything using SQL. So let's do that uh, as well. Uh, so we uh, do everything in memory. Uh, we will just do a top 20 on the table. And we can see it's the same as uh, before. What we can do is like save a statement. So let's say we select the tip amount from the data frame. And the cool thing is here, the data frame actually refers to the Python variable that we had above, to this data frame. And then you can directly query the, um, the data frame. So here we don't execute it because we don't want to pull in all this data into the, to the notebook but we just want to create like a nice uh, plot out of it. And here you can see that's also 
yeah, extremely skewed. So we can do something similar in, uh, in DuckDB. And we say like, okay, what's the standard deviation of the, of the tip amount? Select the tip amount from the data frame and the, uh, the common table expression that we have here. Say tip amount is larger than zero and the tip amount should be smaller than three times the standard deviation. So this will also not execute, but once we plot it, it will actually run it. And then we can see like a very nice distribution where the average tip amount is around two, two, uh, two, two bucks. It was a very uh, quick high level uh, overview of the 0.2.1 release. I think it works awesomely with uh, by error and DuckDB. Uh, feel free to give it a try. If you run into anything, uh, always feel free to reach out uh, through your post or you can create like an issue. Or if you want to fix it yourself, always welcome to open like a pull request. Highly appreciate it. Uh, and I'm also, uh, or we, have ju we just have like a Python channel in the Iceberg uh, uh, Slack. So if, if you bump into anything, uh, please don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out. That's it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.